very energetic for the Lord, and I bring you greetings on behalf of my bishop, our bishop T. A. Body, Thomas A. Body, and our pastor, his wife, Pastor Darlene A. Body. They told me to come to Singapore and represent them well and do not embarrass them. <laughs> so I hope that Pastor Gilbert will send an email of a good report <laughs> to let him know that I was doing what I was supposed to be doing. Um, I just want to, to give you a brief um, background um, about myself. Um, my name is Gavin McGee Kelly. My husband would be like, what? Where's my name? <laughs> I, I've been married um, coming up this July, on July the 9th, for three years. And we have two children already. Um, we had twins, uh, fraternal twins, a boy and a girl. They were born on December 30th, 2006. And they have been the greatest gift after Jesus that God could have ever given us. They are such a blessing to our lives. And the reason I say this is because um, when my husband and I got married, we, we still are very poor, but we were very poor. We were very poor men, um, as in money poor. Uh, we didn't have a lot, and um, when I became pregnant, I was working as, a, as an administrative assistant for a company, and I got so big, so fast, that and so sick, I couldn't eat very much because the babies were pushing up on everything, so everything, my stomach, everything came up to here, and the babies came out to here. And so I, I couldn't work much longer. Uh, so my husband came to me one day and said, I believe that the Lord is saying it's time for you to do your music. And I was like, what? Are you serious? I was like, we're going to have not one, but two babies. How can I function as an independent artist um, I sing jazz, and um, when the Lord saved me, I, I promised the Lord that I would, I would sing for him, I would be on fire for him, and I was waiting for the Lord to move me into the praise and worship ministry at my church, but it never happened. And for a long time, I would be in the audience like, what? Like, I need to be up there. That's where I need to be, up there leading praise and worship. Why am I sitting back here with two babies? I need to be up there leading praise the worship. That's where I should be. And God said, no, that's not where I called you to be. I, I have a love for jazz. I've loved jazz um, since I was young, very young. And um, when I was in college, I studied uh, performance arts and music. So I was able to learn a lot more um, about jazz. And so that is where the Lord would use me. And I thought it was so odd because I was like, I've never heard of this before. Like I would pre prepare to go and sing at different jazz lounges and clubs and festivals or whatever. And I would always be in prayer and I would all, the Lord would always minister to me through song. And sometimes when I would get to where I was going, I would say, hey y'all, do you mind if I just sing a song I, that was on my heart today? And the crowd would say, yeah, sing it, like in the middle of a bar. And I would sing it and the presence of the Lord would come. Amen. Amen. And then people would come up to me afterwards and say, oh, I haven't been to church since I was five. I haven't heard a song like that since I was three. <laughs> like, thank you so much in, in tears and so many times the Lord would just use me when I would be obedient because a lot of times I would think, Lord, they're going to think I'm crazy. I'm going to go in there and sing a praise and worship song. They're going to laugh at me. They're going to think I'm crazy. And my husband would always say to me, you do not get to choose where God uses you. So I just want to encourage any musicians um, who are here and let you know that Yes, the church is an awesome, awesome, awesome place for the Lord to use you, but the world needs to know that no matter who you are, no matter what you do, you can be a servant of the Lord, posing as a jazz singer. Yes. Yes. So, that's, that's so long of a story, but I'll just shorten it by saying, the Lord spoke to my heart one day and said, you are going to Singapore. And I said, yes, Lord, I will go. And he made a way, not only for me to be able to come and experience a different culture and to work as a musician to help out with our poor situation, 
And he also let me meet wonderful, wonderful Christian sisters who accept me and support me and pray for me. When I'm going into the pubs, they cover me in prayer. They, they pray for me constantly because they know that I really do need that. And I knew that when I was coming to Singapore that I would need to find um, believers who would be praying for me and who would be covering me every night as I sing five nights a week. And so I just, I'm so thankful to Pauline, I'm so thankful to me and, and their family for just loving me, letting me call them Papa and Nana, <laughs> May's mother and father, and just praying over me and encouraging me um, since I've been here. So the Lord answered my prayer in a circle. Um, before I came here, I was praying that we would have financial stability. I was praying that I could continue my career and be a support to my family. And I was praying that I could get a little break from the baby. So hallelujah! <laughs> so I'm going to do um, a song, a two, two songs. Uh, the first song is I Know Who Holds Tomorrow. And the second song is an old Negro hymn called Walk With Me, Lord. And I am singing these songs because the Lord gave me a word this week because I, I do often worry about my husband and my children. I miss them so much. And it's hard for me um, to be here sometimes because I, I've been with my baby since they were in my belly. And uh, my husband, well, I've been with him for three years. And he's just an amazing man of God. I love him so much. And um, I was just like, oh, Lord, what do I say to these people? I don't know what to say. And the Lord just told me to tell you all, don't worry. Don't worry. He knows everything about our families and what we need, what our children need, what our spouses need, what we need to, what we want to do to be able to give to the ministry, the things that the ministry requires the needs that are met, the lights need to stay on, the, you know, the equipment needs to be paid for, all of those things. Um, and God spoke to me through the book of Matthew, the sixth chapter, and he was saying to me, do not, don't I care for the birds? Don't I care for the, the flowers? They don't work a job, but I provide for them. So in that, God is our source. Our jobs are great. You know, the things that we do to earn income is great, but God is our source. So when all else fails, I am beginning with it. And he will come. 